What's up, everybody? It's Ty the Bourbon Guy, and welcome back to another whiskey review. Today, I'm really, really excited to try this one. Penelope Barrel Strength is what we are reviewing today. Now, this has actually been in the whiskey news a lot lately. Penelope has, because they have been acquired by MGP. And a lot of people have found interest in this because Penelope sources, or at least one of their sources, would be MGP. So a lot of people have said that MGP is just buying the brand. A lot of people have said that they're just buying their barrels back. I think there's a lot more to it. <laughs> there's a lot of companies that have sourced their whiskey from MGP in the past. So why is this one in particular the one that they're going after? Now, I think to me, it makes the most sense for both sides, just from a business standpoint. I think there's a lot more to Penelope than just the brand or just them blending. Again, a lot of people have blended MGP's whiskey in the past and have been successful doing it and have not been acquired. So I think you have to kind of look at it as the full operation, right? Penelope and the team that they have just seem to, to get it. There's a lot of infrastructure there that maybe MGP can use. So yes, the brand, but I think it's more than that as well. I think one of the things that we have to consider going forward is that if a company is sourcing their whiskey from MGP, or from anybody for that matter, and then they get acquired by that same company, it starts to make me wonder which barrels are going to be available <laughs> to you in the future, right? So if you've had certain inventory in the past, it makes me kind of assume that maybe you're gonna have access to some better barrels going forward. So that's something to, to consider. But again, I've always been the first to say this, that I'm a whiskey enthusiast, not an expert. <laughs> I don't distill, I'm not in the business, I just enjoy drinking it. So as a fan, as an enthusiast, I'm really excited to see where this brand goes. I'm excited to see Penelope continue to grow. Uh, I've gotten a chance to talk with a few people over there and I just am really excited for them and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. But in terms of what we're doing today, where it goes from here is drinking it. <laughs> so uh, Penelope Barrel Strength is what we are reviewing. Obviously this is batch 14. I've heard a lot about batch 14. The only other one that I have is batch five. So a lot of batches in between. I'm curious to see uh, how this stacks up to that. So Penelope, barrel strength, batch 14. So if we take a look at the label, I love their bottles. I'm a fan of the shape of the bottle. The logo to me, just the simplicity of it. It's a classy bottle, elegant, and again, if you've watched any of my other videos, <laughs> I'm a fan of what's in the bottle. Let's take a look at the whiskey in the bottle and, and see what it looks like, see how it stacks up. Keep the label to a minimum, and they've done that. There's no excessive marketing. There's not really much here. This is a four grain whiskey that was blended together. So purchasing different barrels from MGP, they did not purchase it blended already, but they purchased those barrels and then blended it into a four grain whiskey. So this is a four grain that includes corn, rye, wheat, and malted barley. So for those that may not know, uh, four grain is just referring to that, right? Four grains. A lot of bourbons use corn, rye, malted barley as their three main components. You have wheated bourbons that substitute the rye out and, and in place of that put wheat. Maker's Mark is one of them. Weller is one of them, so, and there's plenty of others too, but those are kind of the ideas behind that. Um, those are just examples. So for this particular one, when they say four grain, that's what that's referring to is there's literally four grains in this whiskey. Not really much to say about the, the label. I love it. <laughs> I love the bottle. So let's pause for the cork pop. Uh, the cork is the only thing. Me and corks, we, we have this weird, we have this weird thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a fan of like a heavy duty cork that feels solid and, and all that other stuff. But at the same time, if this keeps it in the price range it's in, that's fine with me. So we're going to pour a little bit here. It's a sample and one for good luck. A lot of luck. <laughs> the aroma immediately I met with strawberries. Strawberries, chocolate. There's some spice in there. It kind of reminds me of like a, 
I've never had it, <laughs> but if you were to have chocolate covered strawberries with cinnamon on it or some type of baking spice, there's, there's an element there that's a, that's a spice element, but it's not like a pepper spice or like a, it's not like that. It's like a baking spice for sure. There's some brown sugar in there. So definitely I would say a sweet nose. This is like dessert almost. Like some type of, yeah. Strawberry chocolate dessert. That's good. I like I like the fact that it's not just caramel, vanilla, oak. There's a little bit more to it. I always enjoy when there's fruit there, but one of my favorite notes in whiskey altogether is chocolate. Anytime I can get chocolate in a whiskey, oh, it's like one of my it's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, definitely some type of fruit dessert. I'm trying to think of what type of dessert this may be, you know, kind of close to, but the best I can say is like a strawberry covered, a strawberry covered chocolate, <laughs> a chocolate covered strawberry. Great nose, but more importantly, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. Ooh, <laughs> that's really, that's really good. Okay. Let's look at the proof. Proof is, so it's 112 proof. This particular batch is 112 proof. If you have a different batch, uh, your proof may vary, but it's 112 at a barrel strength. Some barrel strengths can be crazy, right? 120, 130, some even higher than that. So given that it's 112, in my opinion, still the drinkability on this is still very good because it's not melting my face off. <laughs> it's it's giving me warmth, giving me depth of flavor, giving me body to those flavors, but not overpowering or making this an aggressive whiskey or making this hard to approach. It's just warm enough to kind of coat the palate and, and give that Kentucky hug without the Indiana hug, it's MGP. <laughs> but uh, without overpowering or feeling too hot or anything like that. Definitely a dessert, you know, some people use the term dessert whiskey. I would throw this in that category. So to me, the initial sip is on any whiskey that has any baking spices, that's that spice. And it's probably just me kind of getting used to that, that proof, but that initial burn, I always say get past the first sip and then keep going. So in that second sip, the fruit comes through. It's almost like a creaminess. It reminds me of like a vanilla cream, like a strawberry yogurt type of texture. The mouthfeel on it is really good. I go back to the nose and the strawberry is definitely there. It's just amazing to me. And if you're new to whiskey, this is why I encourage you to try everything because you, you just never kind of know what different flavors and, and taste profiles and things like that you're going to get out of it. But to put whiskey into a barrel and age it. Everybody does it that way, but depending on the recipe, depending on uh, entry proof, depending on blends, depending on the barrel itself, depending on where it's aged, depending on all these different things, this whiskey that ends up in this glass can be very, very different. And I think that's an amazing thing. Sometimes you get certain notes, you know, leather, chocolate, um, tobacco. Sometimes you get fruit notes. Sometimes you get citrus. Sometimes you just get Plain Jane, <laughs> oak, vanilla, caramel. And sometimes you have whiskeys that kind of take you on a ride. I think this is starting to, you know, you, you kind of start with that, that, that spice side of it. You kind of go into the fruit with the strawberry, uh, the baking spices pick up on the palate after that initial sip. Now we're moving back from the baking spice back into the fruit, the strawberry. Like I said, the texture kind of settles in with that, kind of like strawberry cream. See, and now I go back to it and there's chocolate again. And that's what I'm saying. So it's amazing to me what can be done just by putting whiskey in a barrel, just by blending properly and and having talented people behind that blend. Because I wouldn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I would just be drinking it all. And even on that sip, the creaminess, the mouthfeel, there again. So let's try with water, especially this being a barrel strength. Let's try a drop of water or a few drops of water and let's see what that does. So with the drops of water, I think barrel strengths, especially I've noticed this, um, where if I, you know, do a few drops of water, it'll definitely soften that proof a little bit. 
obviously, but open up that, that palate, open up that nose, make those flavors a little softer for me um, to really be able to taste past the proof. I've always found it interesting that we do that with barrel strength whiskey. We do, I've heard people say, you know, 100 and over do it there. But with a lot of scotches being in the 80 proof range, 80 to 90, I've noticed a lot of people, and not, and not just scotch, but single malts all over the world, I've noticed where people do, you know, add drops of water, even with those proofs being the way they are, for the simple fact that they want to open those flavors up. So I've always wondered with whiskey, why do we, we only typically hear people adding water when it's over a certain proof. So I'm, I'm always interested to try it at different proofs, um, different, different whiskeys. Sometimes I, I, in my opinion, I have added water to certain whiskeys and then it does taste watered down. I lose the flavor altogether, but I think that's where you just have to try it and see what it works out to be. So now that a few drops of water are added in, let's give it a shot. That fruit just smacks me in the face now on the aroma. It reminds me of like when you go to the grocery store and you buy, if you buy, or even like a farmer's market or something like that, you buy fresh strawberries and you maybe set them on your counter. And when you walk past it and you just get that whiff of <laughs> fresh strawberries sitting in your house, that's what that reminds me of. Or if they were just cut or something like that. But I know you at home are like, yeah, we get it. Strawberries, right? <laughs> but it's, that's the main note I get. That chocolate and vanilla. But it's not like a, it's almost like a milk chocolate. Or like I said before, like a desserty type of chocolate. And the vanilla, I can't tell if it's vanilla or if it's just like that, that cream note. But either way, it's somewhere along those those lines. So let's taste it and see what the water did. So the water softened the palate, but to me, adding the drops of water actually made it a little bit more boring. I prefer it without the water, now that I've tried both. Without the water on this, I think I get more depth of flavor. The, the, the mouth feel itself, that creaminess, I really enjoyed without the water. With the water, I feel like I'm starting to lose that a little bit. So I don't get as much depth on, on the flavor and I lose the mouthfeel with the water added. So I personally would do this uh, or enjoy this without water added. I would just drink it neat probably. I'd be curious to go back and see with an ice cube how it, it would do. Again, with this proof. But I'm starting to wonder if just adding the water is making this a little bit more boring. And boring is relative because the neat. I really enjoyed so when I say boring I just mean in comparison but if I add an ice cube I'm wondering if I would if that would be the same outcome that I would lose kind of my interest in this whiskey because I'm adding something to it or the water will eventually melt from the ice only one way to find out I need to try it at some point so let's finish this one here cheers in general MGP again has provided whiskey to a lot of brands and a lot of the times, the prices don't justify what's in the bottle. You source your whiskey, you put it in a bottle, it's a younger whiskey, four years or whatever it may be, or, or below, and then you go sell it for 150 bucks. Definitely have seen that before, and I, I can't stand that. To take the whiskey, source it, and then come up with this blend that's as good as this is, and in my area, this is around 60 to $65. At a barrel strength, to me, this is a, it's, that's a great price point. It's a great brand to support. The whiskey is very good. That's <laughs> probably most important, right? Uh, the whiskey is very good. And now with the acquisition coming up, it would seem that Penelope is just gonna get better and better. So, Given all those things, the, ex the accessibility, Indiana finally got on it. Thank you, Indiana. <laughs> and was able to get Penelope. I, I've just seen it here in the past few weeks. Um, but it, I have seen it kind of all over the place now that it is here. So the it's accessible almost everywhere. Great price point. Great whiskey. If you enjoy higher proofs, I think... This would be one, you know, I hear Rare Breed is one of them, right? In that price range that 
people kind of always talk about as, you know, as something that's that high of a proof and value at the barrel strength level. So when you're talking about value, not just a $20 or below bottle, but a value in terms of alternative to other barrel strength products, this has to be in that conversation. 112 proof, $60 price range, and I feel like it brings more than just the traditional Kentucky bourbon type of notes. And again, this is not Kentucky bourbon, but that's just what that, in my opinion, it brings to the table. Awesome job, Penelope. I'm going to rate this, I think I have to go 93 out of 100. This is a fantastic bottle. Again, great price, available everywhere in my area. I would definitely buy it again when this is over. I, I'm curious because the batches, um, I haven't, I said, I only have batch five and batch 14. And I'd have to go back and try batch five again because it's been a long time. I can't really remember in comparison, but I'm curious, is this batch that amazing or can they stay consistent batch to batch? Or is it kind of like, maybe like a Booker's or um, an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you know, some of those other whiskeys that have different batches where maybe this batch is an amazing one and then you go buy another batch and it's not as good. But something tells me, especially if they're blending this, that the people behind it know what they're doing <laughs> and they can make good whiskey. So I really enjoy it. 93 out of 100 is my rating for this bottle today. If you see it in your area, buy it. But overall, I still think this is a fantastic bottle. I can't wait to see what the next batch does. I've already seen this bottle winning certain awards, and I can see why now that I've tasted it. So if you see it, buy it. It's my recommendation. 93 out of 100. Fantastic job, Penelope. Thank you all for tuning in today. Make sure you like and subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you on the next review. Cheers.